Welcome back to another riveting episode of Gone Nomad. Riveting. It's riveting. Nice. Sweet. So we're picking up where we left off. We were in uh, South Dakota still, wrapping up uh, our job. Yep, it's like middle of December or November. Middle of November. We were supposed to get out of there in December. Um, that was what we were scheduled for based on, on weather. Um, the type of business we're in is uh, really dependent on weather and yeah. it's all outside work. So <laughs> needless to say, um, mid-November, South Dakota, it got cold quick. I mean, within a week or two period, it went from highs in the 40s, 50s to highs in the... Oh, there was the teens and yeah. single digits. And in fact, the week we left, I think the wind chill, the you know, real feel was uh, 22 below, I think. We just got all of our equipment pulled and everything done literally the day before. Yeah, and it, it just turned nasty. So, I mean, we had we got all our gear out and then we had maybe another, you know, week or two of wrapping up some things, shutting down the facility and everything. Um, but it was cold. It was miserable. And, you know, a year of planning, of, of just just wanting to choose this lifestyle. I mean, yeah, it was great. We were living in the camper, working. We were working a lot of hours. Um, but, you know, it wasn't the same as, as being on the road. Um, we hadn't done any major hikes. Um, just that one at the Black Hills. Yeah, we hadn't done, you know, really much of anything but work. So We were jonesing to get I, we, Yeah, we were both just chomping <laughs> at the bit to hit the road. And... Uh, to get out so mid-November we finally got you know basically the okay everything was done it was time to go and, and we hooked up and bolted we just I, we just had to go you know and we uh, basically from there we went to Colorado Springs and uh, I think we stopped in like Nebraska or something yeah it's like a 12-hour drive like... you know first time we've been hooked up with the camper um, First time we'd really gone any of the roads were icy, whatever. So we didn't, you know, I, we didn't go crazy. I didn't want to do, you, you know, a 14 hour drive or something ridiculous. So I think we did, you know, five, six hours, um, grabbed the motel room. Um, and then the reason I chose to get a motel room instead of staying in the campground is, you know, for one it night, Arctic. it's Arctic. The, the camper's already been winterized at that point. I didn't want to, you know, get water and all the lines and all that good stuff just to stay for one night. So. We had a motel, and we had reservations in Colorado Springs, which is where my sister and her family lives. That was kind of the idea to spend Thanksgiving with them. Yeah. So uh, we actually stayed at Garden of the Gods RV, RV. Resort, yeah. RV Park. Whatever. Um, very nice park. Oh, it was really cool. It, it was awesome. Kind of like on the edge of town, but it was like... There was trees and stuff in there, so... Yeah, it, it's like right at the base of uh, Pikes Peak, um, which we didn't go up there. I mean, uh, we'll catch it next time through, but uh, it's like two minutes from Garden of the Gods uh, Park, um, which is a city-owned park, I think. Mm. It's pretty small. It's just got some really gorgeous, you know, uh, rock outcrops and... There's some cool little paths and trails through there. Just Yeah, so... You know, the idea was to go up there and kind of get our feet wet in the campground and to go up there and kind of just, you know, do some short walks and... and uh, um, take lots of pictures. Take lots of pictures. Spend some time with family. So we didn't do a lot in Colorado Springs. Um, okay. So... Anyways. We pulled into pulled into Colorado Springs. Uh, we pulled into the campground. And, you know, this was our first campground experience. So... You know, everything from, you know, hauling the trailer, backing in, hooking up. Uh, we really didn't have any issues. Oh, no. With uh, anything. I mean, there was a guy. Remember the guy that, like, guided us in as far as, I mean, he helped us back in and everything. That was, like, part of his job. To yes. To the, it was one of the maintenance guy. He basically walks you to the site. And then he, he, was really cool. he gave me just excellent directions and uh, instruction as far as backing in. Um, I'm not a good backer in her yet. Since then, we've had minor issues with uh backing in with backing in <laughs> um in fact the one i think when we were pulling in here the first time um she's, she's you know in my mirrors telling me come on come on come on back you're good you're good you're good 
Next thing I know, I mean, I'm backing into an electrical pole. It was the other campground, and you didn't hit it, but you were like an inch away. So then the guy, there was a guy, the neighbor, he walks over and he's like, you know, you got to get a, a remote camera for that thing so you can see what you're doing. And I looked at her and I said, well, I've got one. It's just not working today. Yeah. So. The batteries are dead. Yeah. So. We'll get it. But as far as uh, Colorado Springs, um, and that, that, that was a great little park, I think the, the prices were reasonable because it was off season. Um, I think in the summer they might be a little more expensive, but uh, yeah. I, either way, I mean, I highly recommend it. It was an awesome. It was really cool. Clean, nice, it. great park. Bathrooms are nice, everything was nice. Yep. So we were basically, you know, planning on being there for a week to 10 days, visiting family, you know, like we said. Um, but we were also kind of organizing the camper at that point. Yeah, we would, we had been living, you know, in it for six, seven months at that point. Yeah, but we were getting an idea of like, we kind of had an idea before of things that we might want to get when we first hit the road. And okay, we get to this place and we're like, okay, yeah, so we need this and we need this. And just to make it a little bit more comfier, homier, more. We went and bought the the desk that we had referred to in the in the tour. Um, we had removed the kitchen at prior, so putting the desk in was awesome. Um, it gave us a spot to do you know work with the laptops and you know the other cupboards we put clothing in and uh, et cetera et cetera. Just give us a little more storage space. We also we bought a mattress topper, which is a necessity. Yeah, if you're spending any extended time you know in a camper. I would say either upgrade the mattress or buy a mattress topper. So it was like the memory foam with the topper. So I mean, it's like four inches thick or something. It helped tremendously. You know, they're not cheap. I think you're in the two hundred dollar range for that. Yeah, but it, comfort sleeping <laughs> that yeah. makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. Um, we also, you know, it was first time in a campground, so it was buying the. You know the mats up front and uh, the camping chairs and you and know chairs. setting up the grill and using that for the first time and buying propane and yep. our water froze one night we were in the 20s most of the nights there yeah it was a little chilly at night we used a lot of propane um i think i burnt through like a tank in five days or something or because yeah. it was so cold it was <laughs> the teens 20s at night um just on a, on a kind of a side note when we're boondocking, it's like primarily the generator for power and propane for the refrigerator and the stove. hot water tank, stove, and furnace. Yeah. Um, that's when you're boondocking. Now, when we're in a campground, the propane we only use for just a stove, I believe. We yeah. switch the hot water over to electric, we switch the fridge to electric, and we use little electric space heaters. Um, to keep the temperature up. So your yeah. propane usage when you're in a, in a campground or a park is, is... Goes down tremendously. Yeah, exactly. Now, that being said, when it's in the teens at night, these little electric heaters can't keep up. You need to run the furnace. You need um, some more heat going on there. Yeah, so just learning the way, like I said, our water froze up. But we also learned, though, before we even left, that if you trickle the water, yeah, whenever you're supposed that to be below freezing, just leave one of your taps open for the night. Now, obviously, if you're going in your holding tanks, you can't do that. You're going to fill your holding tank up. But if you've got, you know, if you've got full hookup up. sewer, you can leave that water running all night. Once again, that being said, it was so cold. Even I had the water running that night, and our water still froze up. Yeah, it wasn't quite enough, so... So you can go to Camping World. You can buy a heated supply hose. Um, I think they're around $100. We actually, I went to Home Depot and bought the heat tape and some HVAC reflective tape and some pipe insulation and a garden hose. I probably saved $20 doing the whole thing. Um, maybe it takes you an hour to make one. But, no, you're uh, good to go. I mean, so you have it for whenever you need an accent. Yep. So we've got two hoses I use. I use one, I use uh, just a regular, you know, uh, potable water hose. And then the other one is uh, the one with the heat tape wrapped on it. So depending on where we're hooked up. Um, and what the season is, I'm going to use either or. Yeah. Uh, what else do we buy? It seemed like every day we were spending, you know, $200. Yeah. I just, just buying stuff that 
you know, we hadn't used prior. Um, and by no means, it wasn't any, like, the materialistic, like, non-necessary stuff. I mean, it was stuff that we knew. We kind of were, like, budgeting on and planning on to get this anyways. So it wasn't anything extra by any means, but... Basically, what we're saying is no matter how prepared you think you are, the first time you hit the road, plan on buying stuff. I mean, I went and bought, like, leveling blocks. Oh, yeah, I need um, those. What else? Extension hose good. for the sewer hose and, the, you yeah. know, the heated water supply. And you're just going to run into a lot of oddball things that, you know, you, you hadn't thought about. Um, yeah. Once you get them all acquired, you know, you store them and you use them all the time and you're good to go. It's not like yep. you need to just keep buying and buying. So it was just that initial... We just needed Shot. to knock these few things out of the way, and then it's been pretty kosher ever since then. Yeah, since then, once you get over that hump of, you know, what you actually need, then, then it goes pretty smooth. Yep. So that was basically, you know, as far as the getting set up and hooked up, we really didn't have any issues hauling the, mm -hmm. the trailer. Um, it was awesome. Went so smooth. we just spent a week there. Um, highly recommend, you know, Garden of the Gods. It's a free park to go up. And every day there was people mountain biking, jogging, oh, walking. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, people that live, like, right at the base of it or whatever, they're jogging on the weekends all the time. I mean... It's a very, very busy park. It's definitely packed <coughs> on the weekends and during the summer and stuff, but it's pretty awesome to check out. Yeah, it's really cool. I was, you know, it was a couple days, I think you were and Susie homemaker in the camp or whatever and I would just it was such a short drive I would just grab my coffee and jump in the truck and run up with the camera and oh it was a crack of dawn walk around for <laughs> you a wanted to go hours. take pictures <laughs> well I started chasing these mule deer and it was just awesome to be you know so close to these I mean they weren't it's not like a drive through animal park where they're all tame or I mean they were you know they were in the rut the bucks were chasing the door around um, it was really cool. I mean, I got some really great pictures of, uh, you know, the bucks and the does. And, yeah. Uh, it was beautiful. In fact, I got you out. Oh, yeah. Because we had gotten snow the one day. Yeah, the light dusting of snow. Uh, once again, cold, but, you know, that awesome. that scene, you know, the snow on the, the, the picturesque rocks, it was gorgeous. I mean, it was yeah. just, it was awesome. But, like typical Colorado weather, I mean, beautiful, sunny, snow was gone the next day, so... Yeah, it was, it was pretty pretty neat. I love that state. Um, great little park. Uh, not a lot of hiking opportunities. You're not going to bang on any miles there um, or do any backpacking, anything like that. It's just a smaller, like a city park or whatever, yeah. but it's, it's pretty cool. So 
that was just getting their feet wet, visiting family, you know, first campground thing. Uh, and then... Oh, yeah, I forgot. feeding experience. So here's the thing. <laughs> this is awesome. I was, like, playing with squirrels for two or three days. Um, just, you know... They're I'm just so tame. Grabbing nuts, and they're coming up and eating nuts out of your hand. And uh, I lured one into the camper one day, uh, just having fun with them. <laughs> it was she, awesome. She thought I was crazy. <laughs> so then, one night, I think it was, like, 11 o'clock at night, you know, this is yeah. in the campground, you know... Uh, she she goes out to go to the bathroom and she opens the door real quick and she, you know she says come here come here so i walk out there and look and here are these three doe i think it was like four deer out there just literally right near our picnic table they're they're laying just down out. you know it's dark it's at night right in the middle of the campground these deer are laying down out there so you know that was pretty amazing in itself and then i think you went to go to the bathroom yeah so i ran into the camper and i grabbed an apple just sat down real casual and started cutting the apple up and I'm just kind of holding out next thing I know this doe she comes over and it was to the point where I was feeding her with my right hand and her neck was over my shoulder I was basically almost scratching her neck um, they're just so people friendly I mean they were really still a little skittish yeah but, uh, that was very cool and then I, I don't think we had any pictures of that but I got some pictures of you feeding oh yeah so then I had to go in and get an apple feeding because that doe. deer was a little piggy but I mean the little babies were comfortable enough they made their own beds they were just yeah, bedded was, down right there what 10 feet away yeah it was awesome it was it was one of those cool like wow you know this doesn't <laughs> doesn't happen in my normal life this isn't real. campground moments so that was kind of cool yeah that was awesome so after our little uh, deal in colorado then uh we started the real adventure we started to actually head south into warmer weather um we went from there down to I think we had reservations at Thousand Trails. Thousand Trails in Cottonwood. Um, Cottonwood, Arizona, is maybe a twenty-minute drive from Sedona. Yeah. I didn't want to stay right in Sedona. Um, I just had it in my head; it was a little expensive, and I, I think it is. It's expensive, and it's commercialized, but not to the point where it's, you know, the strip malls, plazas, things like that. It's like the quaint little smaller shops and yeah yeah it's it's a little expensive because we did go and buy a few things there and shop around but it's, it's just pretty cool to check out i mean you got to go there the place is like a postcard i mean it is the most picturesque town i mean driving into it, it it's extraordinary um yeah it was just it's, it's absolutely gorgeous in fact so basically we were staying in cottonwood and then we would commute up every day to go and do our hiking or check out sites um, yeah it, it was really awesome. All the rest of the, you know, Sedona and the Cottonwood uh, will be in our next video. And uh, we appreciate you guys uh, watching, or commenting, subscribing. And subscribing. Yeah, you it's, guys have been awesome. I've been really shocked at, you know, the, the response we've gotten so far on YouTube. I mean, it's, you know, we're three weeks into it or whatever. And, you know, 150 subscribers and, you know, 3,000 yeah. views or something. I mean, it's... It's awesome, and the feedback that we've gotten from everybody has just been phenomenal. I mean, it's... Uh, it's just, I mean, we just wanted to put our story out there so when other people want to try this, they're interested in it and curious, whatever, they can just kind of get some ins and outs, you know, and find out things it, like we're doing. That keeps us fired up, you know, yeah. and, and, and also, you know, we're inspired by other people's comments and stories, and uh, it's just awesome so far. So, uh, appreciate it. Keep thanks, watching. Thanks for watching. And uh, I guess we'll catch you next episode. You got it. Peace. See ya.